Hi, I'm Chris with the Freebirds, and I wanted to talk to you about what we've been doing since we lifted the roof of the bus and kind of what we've got going on and what the plan is moving forward. So, like I said before, um, I got, uh, I cut the bus, lifted it up 38 inches, got it tacked and welded into place, and what I did after that was I went through every spot where I had the original channel for the bus. I came through and put a one inch by one inch by one eighth thick square steel tubing. And that just looks like this here. It's just uh, it's hollow on the inside, eighth, eighth inch thick, one inch by one inch square. Uh, the reason I used the one inch by one inch was because the channel on the bus, the one inch fit right in there. Um, and uh, anything bigger than one inch would not have fit inside of there uh, and you know realistically speaking you know this one inch square tubing is going to provide a lot better structural integrity than the original channel did anyway uh, that's there so it's not like i lost anything with it uh, putting going one inch by one inch and then so that gives me my up and down and secures the ceiling and the roof down on the sides and gives me my support and then I've got to, uh, I'm going to be putting a, a layer of skin back on some sheet metal on the sides and then closing it in the back as well. And I've got to have, I'm going to be using rivets for that. So I've got to have something to be able to attach those rivets to. So what I did was I took, I took one inch by one inch, again, by an eighth thick angle steel. And I have uh, went through and attached that to the side of this square tubing here. Um, and I lined it up flush with the outside of my channel so that whenever the skin comes through it'll all line up with the channel the outside of the bus the skin everything will come together just as such and again I use just the one inch by one inch by one eighth square uh, steel angle for that and then so I've got some crossbars here that go all the way across on both sides um, one thing I really like was the original windows of the bus. So I really wanted to be able to put those windows back in place the way they were. So that's why I put this across the top. Um, and plus it gives me a spot again where I can uh, rivet the skin to the bus to kind of close it in. So one line all the way across right here and then up and down every couple feet and then all the way across the top. And what I did for, for this, basically this is going to be the window upper in the cross member for here that also provides some structural integrity uh, front and back for support it's all welded into place and uh, for that I used one and a half by one and a half by one eighth uh, steel angle um, again I just used one eighth inch on everything it's easier to weld it that way you're not dealing with thinner and thicker material and uh, and it seems to be working just fine uh, cost wasn't too much either but that's all welded into place the whole all, both sides are completely done with the exception of a little bit of fabrication in the back and I'll talk to you about that right now so so on the back corner here what I'm going to be doing is is I'm going to be using the the metal that I took out of the ceiling of the inside of the bus it's a little thicker than the normal metal that was on the sides um, in fact I've got it in the back here waiting but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to rivet it to the side of the bus here and then I'm going to fold and bend it around to create my my skin and my uh, my the outside of my bus here to close all this in. So what I did was the bus already has an angle here, a rounded angle with uh, where it's riveted to. So I'll be I'm going to be taking these rivets out and using those holes to secure the bottom part of that metal across here. But for the top there is nothing there it's no structural it's just the old metal that was there on the bus so what i did was i took a piece of angle actually the one and a half by one and a half by one and an eighth angle and i uh i cut one of the angle parts off leaving a little bit of a lip and then i cut little lines in it across and uh, put it on a clamp and just kind of bent it slowly until i had the radius i needed to match to match this corner here and that's going to be connecting up at the top so I'm going to come out from here in the back and then I'll put this into the top and then I have I can put holes into this 
and that'll give me a location to secure the top part of the metal across there um, to get my to get my corner flow with it. Um, like I said, a little bit more structural that needs to be done. I've I've put these in, which will give me some support, and it'll also give me some places where I can put the rivets along the back. Um, I put another inch and a half by inch and a half across the top to give me some support there and to give me a place where I can put rivets up top. I've just got to, again, put these, these corners here, put them in on both sides, extend the, the sidewalls back about another 12 to 13 inches to catch up to the back corners, and then put my holes in here, and then I can start closing that in on the back. And that's, uh, that, that's pretty much what it's waiting for right now. I've got to start drilling holes on the sides, I've got to finish fabricating this back in, and then I can close in the sides and the back, and this will all be done. I'm gonna to have to buy metal for the sides, but like I said, I'm gonna be repurposing the, the ceiling metal from inside on the back. It'll give me a little thicker metal, a little more structural support back in the back where all that weight and, and stuff comes together. Um, so that's the plan right now, that's what we're working on. Hi, it's Reason Freebirds. Thank you for watching our videos. Please subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. Bye.